What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be doing a short 3D scene and compositing walkthrough of this city light beam shot that we have created for our atmospheric add-on for Blender trailer. As usual, this walkthrough is not only a tutorial, but should give you some ideas on how you can implement these same techniques into your own 3D projects. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that pretty soon here, we are going to be releasing a new free update of our atmospheric add-on for Blender. This update is going to include a new scatter system for the atmospheres within the add-on for a more streamlined workflow. And in addition to that, we'll be also providing the looped elements on their own for compositing inside of After Effects and your other 2D compositing softwares as well. In addition to the interface we have created already for use of this add-on inside of Blender. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our scene setup. It's a pretty simple one here, this shot can be broken down really into three main elements. The buildings and skyscraper environment, the atmosphere loops that we've added through our atmospheric add-on, and finally the light beam that we have created for this sci-fi look that kind of comes down from the sky here. So I've separated these three main elements into their own specific view layers so that we could composite them separately. So as you can see here, if I go to the top right, we can see our three different view layers and I'll go through these one by one and then we'll get into the compositing process as well. So first we have our building view layer, which is our first one right here. And I'll go ahead and turn off our atmospheres for the sake of just showing off the buildings here as well as our portal beam. So pretty basic scene setup here. I have a few assets here from City Builder 3D from the Hong Kong pack. These front 3D buildings are just all duplicates from the Hong Kong City Builder 3D pack. So I've just duplicated this element multiple times to create kind of an alleyway setting here. So you can see if I go to our camera view, which is a low angle, I just added these buildings to create kind of a long alleyway here and to populate the space a bit more. And then to create a little bit more interest, I've added our city skyscrapers here in the deep background just to provide a little bit more depth and interest. But one thing that you'll notice here, since I'm going for like a low angle shot, I don't actually have to build this scene up as much. So for example, if I was going up here, you know, you're gonna see much more of this blank space in the background. So you'll have to populate that area in a different way. Since I went for like a low angle, I wanted to go for like a menacing look, I was actually able to get away with a pretty simple scene setup here and save a lot of computer memory in that way. So a pretty basic scene setup here for our buildings. I have uh, this basic ground plane that has a concrete texture on it so that it would reflect the proper colors from the ground going up as light bounced around the scene. And for the actual lighting of the scene, I just used a very basic cloudy HDRI with a strength of 0.6 because I wanted that light beam effect to affect the lighting of the scene a little bit more in comparison to the HDRI itself. So pretty basic scene setup here. I'll go ahead and show you guys with and without the HDRI so you can get an idea. I'll go into camera view here and just go into render view with our building view layer. So this is the buildings view layer without any of those other elements added. As you can see, this deep background is our HDRI. So it's a cloudy background and and then we can, of course, make it transparent, as you can see here by clicking this button. And now that HDRI is lighting our scene, but we don't actually see it in our composite. So we can render this image with an alpha channel and then replace that background with another image or video in our compositing process. So this is the first part of the scene that I've set up, just the general layout of our buildings. I wanted to grunge up the city a bit. As you can see, aside from some of the uh, texturing on the buildings here, which have a little bit of grunge on them, it's a pretty clean looking scene. And I know I mentioned this before, but one of the best ways that I like to add a little bit of variation and depth and just create a little bit more of a live action look for a 3D render is by adding a 2D element on a card into the scene to add a little bit more imperfection to the render. So as you can see here, the buildings by themselves here don't really look that realistic and in my opinion, need a little bit more variation and imperfection in the environment to make them a more interesting and realistic shot. Now, we weren't going for total photorealism here, but we definitely want to bridge that gap a little bit. And one of the best ways we can do that is by adding some real live action elements on cards that are integrated into the 3D scene. So that's what I've done here next with our atmospheric elements. They're just 2D smoke atmospheres on planes and they're just looped over the course of our timeline. And that's really gonna help create a little bit more variation in the volumetrics, especially if you use those 2D atmospheres in addition to a mist pass or other procedural 3D volume effect. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the atmospheres as well that I've added and then I'll go through them one by one here. As you can see on this view layer, I've made them indirect only, so they won't actually be seen on this view layer, but they will affect the lighting of our buildings. So I'll go ahead and turn off the indirect only so we can see all of our atmospheres in addition to our buildings. And you can see what this is gonna do for us to help make a little bit more of a gritty and realistic 3D render. So let's just let it render here for a second and it should give us a cool looking result. And you might think that some of these edges are a little bit hard, but just keep it in mind that this uh, deep background will have a sky on it as well. So that will help blend in these atmospheres that are in the deep background as well. 
So you can see I've added some bigger atmospheres here in the foreground as if some steam is coming up with maybe some ventilation just below camera. So I've added a variety of atmospheres in both the foreground and the background of this shot. You can see kind of up by the skyscrapers, I've added some more kind of smokestack style steam elements that in my opinion helps to sell the environment as well. So you can see if I just go up there really quick. So this is what our elements look like as 2D planes. You can see kind of the layering that's going on here. And as you stack more of these atmospheric elements on top of each other, you can get away with those 2D elements because you actually get a little bit of parallax between the various 2D elements that you're combining into your scene. As long as the camera doesn't go directly sideways next to those 2D elements, it's a really great way to help composite some real live action footage into your scene and not have to do everything with 3D volumetrics or VDBs or something like that. So just a nice way to add some atmospheres to your scene. And you can see up here, even on our buildings in the deep background, see if I can zoom in here. I've added these smoke elements, which really helps in my opinion to provide some variation on the actual background and get a little bit more of a realistic result. So that's what we've done there. I pretty much added these elements on the top of all of our buildings here. As if, again, there's some kind of ventilation coming up from the top of these buildings, which is not uncommon in the real world. So I've added another one here and in the compositing prop, but uh, that's what I've done there with the atmospheres. You can see here in the foreground by our kind of shorter buildings here that I've used them a bit more heavily to create a lot more layers of atmosphere. But then in the deep background and up in the sky by our taller skyscrapers, I've just gone for a little bit more of a subtle effect as if there's a lot more atmospheres deep in the alleyways of the city. So you can see the various elements that we've added to our scene to help blend everything together. And as as I mentioned, I didn't actually render out the atmospheres on this view layer. I rendered them out separately with the buildings as a holdout. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that real quick. I'll make our atmospheres indirect only on this view layer. And you can see when we go into 3D view here that our atmospheres are just these 2D cards that we've added in various places in our scene. So as you can see here, our second view layer is our atmospheres by themselves. So you can see not much has changed in 3D view, but our buildings uh, collection here is enabled as a holdout. And what happens when you make something a holdout is anything that's behind those elements in the holdout collection is going to be masked according to the 3D camera position. So as you can see here, if we go into rendered view really quick, you can see kind of where our buildings are intersecting with our atmospheres and using holdouts in this way are a great way to layer 2D atmospheres onto your 3D scenes because you don't have to do any manual masking. Essentially, the holdout of the buildings is gonna do your masking according to the 3D camera in your scene. So if this building right here, if I select it, is in front or intersecting with our atmospheric element that we've added into the scene, it's gonna hide it wherever it's in front of the atmosphere or wherever it intersects with it. So using a holdout of your scene geometry is a really great way to help composite those 2D elements into your scene so that you don't have to do a lot of manual masking and uh, other more tedious techniques. So you can see here, if I go into camera view, you can see kind of where those buildings would be based on that holdout. But we're going to render, of course, just the atmospheres in this view layer, and then we can overlay this very easily onto our building's composite, and then we don't have to worry about doing any tedious masking or anything like that. So using holdouts with 2D elements is a really great way you can help composite them and integrate them into your 3D scene a lot better. So. Uh, anyways, that's what I've done for this view layer. Pretty simple here. You can see our atmospheres in the deep background are being occluded by our skyscraper elements as well, which is quite nice. So anyways, our third view layer that we've composited into our scene is our portal beam. And this was a little bit more intense to create, so I'll go into this one a little bit more in depth. I'll go ahead and just play our scene really quick so you can see the 3D geometry of everything. So go ahead and play it here. You can see our light beam comes down from the sky and there's some particles emitting off of it. And yeah, that's kind of what we've created here for this uh, kind of sci-fi effect. And to create these beams here is actually a pretty simple process. Go ahead and show you guys without the buildings here. If I go into rendered view, this is essentially what our beams look like without having any glow or color correction in the compositor. So actually a pretty basic beam here. And you can see if we scroll through our scene very slowly, there are actually two beams here. One of them is coming down from the top of frame and the other is coming down to meet it. You know, we've just animated them over the course of our timeline. And what we've done to create these beams, I'll go ahead and show you. I've just created a cylinder here and added a whole bunch of different modifiers to it in addition to a particle system. I'll go ahead and just show you for one of them really quick. I'll turn off the modifiers. The first thing I've done here is I've just created this basic cylinder here and I've kind of sculpted it to get a little bit more of an organic shape. So as you can see here, if I play through the scene right now, 
It's just an organic shape that has an emissive material on it. So pretty basic starting point for our portal beam. Then I added a build modifier on it. So what this build modifier is going to do is over the course of 24 frames and starting at frame 34, which is when I wanted the beam to come down from the sky, it's going to actually build the beam. So it's gonna build it in the order in which the vertices are created. And I actually have a tutorial specifically on how to use the build modifier if you're interested in this specific effect. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description below. But pretty basic little animation there with the build modifier. And I wanted to add a little bit more of an organic displacement to it as well, which is why I've added this displacement modifier with some noise on it. So you can see when I enable that, we get a little bit more of an organic look with our displacement there. So using a displacement modifier is a great way to get a more procedural looking organic look without having to do a lot of manual sculpting. So that's what I've done there. And I've just used a basic clouds texture to act as the displacement on our beam here. And then of course you can adjust the strength here as well to create more or less displacement based on that clouds texture. Of course, I've added a pretty subtle amount of displacement there, but this is the general idea here. Of course, you can go for more if you want to. And after adding that displacement modifier, I added a wave modifier to give it a little bit of animation. So this is a pretty cool effect because what it does is it actually creates a wave on your geometry and you can kind of control how the wave looks. So for example, you can see I have a pretty long wavelength here. There's kind of a wave that's going out here and going down our geometry, but we can actually increase the height of the wave and create a little bit more of a different look. So now you can see it a lot more obviously here. See, it's creating a wave on that geometry, which is uh, a little bit more of a interesting look. So I've kind of kept it subtle here because it's going so quickly, but it definitely adds a little bit of randomness and kind of like a portal beam or a lightning beam type effect. So that's what we've done there. Finally, I've also added a particle system to this light beam as well. So you can see if I zoom in here, I just have these particles kind of emitting off of it. And that's just to kind of create some sparks around our system to create a little bit more of an organic feel as well. And you can see if I go into rendered view, what this looks like, you can see the little spark particles. And this spark particle is just an icosphere that I've instanced with a basic particle system right here. I brought down the velocity really far down. So they're just kind of falling off of our beam here. Now I knew I was going to add a lot of glow and glare to this view layer, so I didn't really go crazy with the detail but I thought that the sparks were a nice touch. So anyways, for the second portal beam, you can see here, I've essentially just duplicated our main portal beam here and I've scaled it on the Z axis by negative one so that the build modifier allowed it to come up from the floor instead of coming down from the ceiling. So pretty basic little effect here. I also have an empty here that helps to animate the noise to create a little bit more randomness in our portal beam. So yeah, this was our portal beam view layer. That was the last view layer that we have created. Again, for this view layer, I've made our buildings a holdout. And since our buildings are a holdout, as you can see, they are occluding our portal beam just based on our viewing angle from the camera. So a really nice way you can get into the compositor and not have to do a lot of that manual cleanup with rotoscoping and such like that. After creating these few view layers, it was time to composite all of them together inside of the compositor. So I've rendered them out here. And as you can see, this is our compositing node setup here. Pretty simple setup. I'll go ahead and go through the nodes one by one here, but this is the final composite. And when compositing, a lot of the time, I like to start from the back of the scene all the way to the front, according to Z space. So the first thing that I've added is our sky deep background. Since we uh, rendered everything with an alpha channel, we needed to replace that background with something else. So as you can see here, just added a very basic sky background to our scene. I've added a curves effect to it to bring it down a little bit as far as the brightness goes. Then next we added our buildings view layer right here over top of our sky. So you can see here, this is our buildings on top of our sky background. And you can see that our portal beam is interacting with the buildings himself because we've enabled that portal beam on this view layer as an indirect only so that it's not showing up in the view layer, but it is interacting and lighting the environment. Next, we have our portal beam here by itself overlaid on top of our composite. So you can see here, what this looks like. So I've added a lot of different glow and glare elements to it. I'll go through them really quick here. So you can see this is our portal beam. I've called it portal beam anyway. It's like a light beam anyway. And you can see without any of these effects on it, we get something like this, but then we add, you know, the blur effect to it right here. So we blur those pixels a bit. We get something like this. Then I've added a little bit of RGB curves to brighten it up a little bit, which you can see there. And then we've added some glare nodes as well. I've used some fog glow nodes here with a very low threshold. Since our light beam is pretty much just a singular color since it's emitting light, it didn't really need to play around with the threshold 
threshold that much because it's all just one color. So you can see we've added some glow there and I'm adding two different layers of glow here with these glare nodes. And then finally a third one with a streak glare node, which I'll show here in a second. So here we have our portal beam with those two fog glow nodes. And then finally we have our third glare node, which is a streaks one. And you can see that's going to kind of blur the image sideways here. Since I've just used two streaks, it's going to blur the image on the X axis here and create a little bit more of a grungy effect in my opinion. On top of this, I've deepened the shadows of our background with an ambient occlusion node on our buildings, which you can see here. So you can see the background. You can see our buildings get a little bit deeper in the shadows. And that's pretty subtle here. I've just taken our ambient occlusion data and overlaid that on top of our buildings here. And I just wanted to make the building shadows pop over top of our portal beam glow effect because it was fading them a little bit. And then finally, we have this alpha over node here, which is our atmospheric elements by themselves here. So you can see if I uh, go ahead and take this view node here and show you guys the atmospheres by themselves here really quick. So we have our atmosphere elements with our holdout and you can see the sampling wasn't super high here. So we're getting a little bit of noise, but uh, I added a little bit of blur on the final composite. So it ended up working out okay. But as you can see here, I've brightened up the atmospheric elements a bit and also I've color corrected them a little bit to the cooler side with the color balance node here. So you can see a much cooler look. And then I've overlaid this on top of our entire composite, just like that. And you can see if I adjust this factor setting here, we can see before and after very quickly that those atmospheres definitely add a lot of uh, realism and depth to the scene. You can, of course, dial it back even to 0.1, for example, and it still helps to have a little bit of that subtle atmosphere in the environment. Of course, these elements are moving as well, so they provide a little bit less of a static shot. And finally, I didn't mention, but I did render out a mist pass of our buildings. So as you can see here on this building view layer, under our passes, I've chosen to render out a mist pass. And what that's going to do is it's going to provide a kind of volume metric depth pass for the buildings themselves so that we can kind of procedurally add some mist on top of our scene. And this is going to help blend in those atmospheric elements as well. As you can see here, if we show it with that mist pass, it's going to help kind of lift the shadows procedurally in the deep background, which is what atmospheric fall off does in the real world. And you can see if I just view this mist pass by itself here, which we're overlaying with this mix node, our mist pass right here for our buildings view layer is going to provide us with this data to work with, which when overlaid on our image is going to lift the shadows in the deep background and add a little bit of a mist effect and then leave most of the foreground elements alone. And as you can see, that mist pass really helps to integrate the 2D atmospheric elements that we've added to our scene into the scene as well. So you can see if I dial back the mist pass, we get this, but then by adding it back into our scene, we're getting a lot more depth into our environment and it actually feels a little bit more real world scale because of the depth that that provides. Anyways, after this, I've just added a very basic color balance node to color correct our image a little bit and got this final result. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel, and I'll see you next time.